The next question regarding covering the face and the cloth touching the face. I think the question is not about hijab and niqab, but rather about ihram, because this is the question we get all the time, that some of the Hanafiya, they say that uh, the cloth cannot touch the face in ihram, but then they say uh, that the niqab is wajib, so how should a woman deal with this? Again, always go back to adilla, to the proofs. The hadith in Al-Bukhari, Aisha radiyanha says that when the non-mihram men would come close, we would take our khimar and cover our faces with it. Tayyib, so there is a piece of cloth called niqab. Niqab is not the only thing you can cover your face with, but there is a separate, and this was in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this was somebody who had wealth could wear the niqab because other people couldn't afford a separate cloth. So when you had wealth, you would not just use the khimar that would sit on your head, you would have a niqab. So Rasulullah sallallahu he forbid the niqab for women in ihram so that all the women would not be separated with somebody who can afford that and not afford that. Like the men, you wear the, the rida and izar, which are very simple clothing, which is what we call the ihram today, but this is the two types of clothing, to make people on the same level. Tayyib. Now, that does not mean Rasulullah forbid covering the face. This is the mistake some people think. And then the idea that it can't touch your face, there is no proof for that. That is just something made up. There is no adilla for that. The hadith of Aisha where she was with Rasulullah that shows that the women at that time would be with the families away from the non-mihram. Not like today. Today in, in the Hajj and Umrah, you're packed together. I mean, maybe not with Corona, but regularly. Right? But in that time, the people would be with, on camels. They would be with their family. They, and the non-mahram would be away. Rasulullah used to make tawaf on a camel. Today we can't do that. But they used to. And at that time, they would be just with their mahram. So if they didn't cover their faces, there was no problem. But the hadith of Aisha illustrates that Rasulullah approved her covering her face in ihram. Because he was there and he did not forbid it. And iqrar al-Nabi is a dalil. So when the non-mahram came close, she took her khimar and she covered her face, obviously that's going to touch her face. She's not going to cover her face, you know, <laughs> like this or something. So there is no forbidden on the cloth covering your face. You cannot have a separate cloth, the niqab, but you can use the khimar to cover the face, and you should, especially nowadays when people are very close, non-mahram are closer to you than even in regular life, then the wujub of, of the hijab, uh, it, it supersedes, as Sheikh Ibn Baz and Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen have all clarified. So, there is no problem. Some of the people now, they've come up with some bid'ah. What they do now, they wear a cap, like a baseball cap, and then put a cloth on it. And then they've put a hardship on our sisters. First, how do you make sujood now? When you go to make sujood, you have a brim. So then you're moving it to the side, exposing the face anyway, so what's the point? Or you're not making sujood correctly. Why would you do this? You think the Sahabiyat had baseball caps and visors? No, I mean, the simple way of the Sahabiyat is excellent. Look, you have a khimar when you're with non-mihram, which is most of the time, and then you cover the face, you can tie it, you can pin it, you're good, khalas, done. Don't, don't make exaggerated, weird scenarios as people have done. 